watching the full championship series on ABC Sports as coverage of the FedEx Orange Bowl continues. Maryland and Florida in the 68th FedEx Orange Bowl. A fired up group of Terrapins and they hung in tough with the number five team in the country through much of the first half but missed opportunities and a two quarterback system that's worked to perfection for the Gators and even Steve Spurrier happy about the last touchdown pass that came with three seconds left in the second quarter. Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy back with you along with Lynn Swan. Maryland is doing what they wanted to do. They picked off a couple passes, but you got to turn them into points. Well, defensively coming in, we said if they had a chance to win, the defense had to set the tone. Three turnovers by Maryland only led to three points. And Florida, uh, you know, this two-quarterback system, they've done that before, and it's working for them again here tonight. And they're going to have the ball first to start the third quarter. And this one goes out of bounds, and so they're going to have great field position, courtesy of the out-of-bounds kick. Our Morgan Stanley storyline. Rock Berlin started the game through a touchdown pass, had a couple of picks. Grossman then came in deep into the second quarter and immediately went 11 out of 14, 125 yards and two touchdowns. And there's the key, the bottom one there for Maryland. Uh, only three points off of the three turnovers. You got to do better than that. Yep. They had a fumble recovery and two interceptions. You know what that speaks to? That's called sudden change. And for Florida defensively to go out in a sudden change situation and to shut the other team down, that's big. And John Hulk, the defensive coordinator, got to be very happy about that. Grossman wants to throw on first down and throws it away. Fullback Roberts was out there, but pressure came from Henderson. Let's check in with Swanee. And guys, when I talked to Ralph Frazier, all the things that you had said are absolutely correct, and he verified those things. So we got to take better chances. we got to do better jobs with the opportunities we have on the turnovers. But what really irked him was he said, we are not executing and we're missing assignments. He said, we haven't missed assignments all year long the way we're missing them this afternoon. If we continue to do that, we won't be in the ball game. So he wants his team to just stay with, stay the course. He believes they can move the ball, just better execution. Two things there, Swanee. 46 days since they played the last time. This is the first bowl game any of these players have ever been in. Grossman on second down. Fires complete. This one's tight. Knocked out of bounds. And he might have the first down. He's awfully close. Had to get to the 45, and that's exactly where they're standing. But you see Rex Grossman saying we're about that, that far short. Steve Spurrier, the system that he puts in, the passing, not only with the quarterbacks, but the routes they run, everything else. You see everybody kind of getting around Steve. It's, he wants to block the signals <laughs> from the other side of the field so they can't pick him up. Grossman may have said we got the first down by that much because they did. At the 45. Graham now. Whew, man, that's got to be Henderson in the middle of that pack. He ran into somebody that stood him straight up. Could have been Leon Joe, the outside linebacker. It was number 32. EJ 42. Just plays off the fullback and makes the play. They were both there. He's been involved in a lot of hits tonight. The 18-point halftime deficit, by the way, is Maryland's largest of the year. And Florida's 28 points are the most by a Maryland opponent in the first half this year. Grossman lofts it. Nice touch. Out of bounds. First down, Jabbar Gaffney. That thing needed a little more touch than it did smoke, and he knew how to throw that one, too. He did. This is very tough. Rolling to your left, turning all the way back to your right. Gaffney, only a sophomore, 27 touchdowns in his first 23 games. Hello. Pretty incredible. One of the finalists for the Butkus Award. There's a first down story, 20 to 6. A little flea flicker. Grossman's got it back. Not there. And he finally throws. And it is out of bounds. Mike Quarter Whaley came in and got some pressure. You know, quarterbacks hate to do that. I mean, there was nobody open. They had the, the flea flicker guy was down in the end zone. He hates, they hate to throw an incompletion. You know what? <laughs> you know, he just, <laughs> they just say, throw it away. Get it away. Get, you know, and that was almost a, you know, a, a late hit on the sideline. But. He should have thrown that ball away about three or four seconds sooner. 
I tried to tell my son that. <laughs> Get rid of it. And he doesn't listen. <laughs> of course, when I, I think back to when I was playing, I you didn't do it either. either. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Second down at the 41. Don't listen. Pressure coming from the corner, maybe. Here comes a blitz. Grossman find himself some time and found a receiver. Short of the first down, I think, by just a bit. And it was Taylor Jacobs again. Bob and Brad, you may notice a little change on the offensive line. The starting center, Zach and Dallas, number 74, is now playing guard. And 54, David Jorgensen, is playing at center. That's because number 75, Shannon Snell, sprained his left ankle and will not be back in the ballgame. Also, Rand Carthen, number 33, sprained his back, the fullback, and he will not be back in the second half. Okay, Swanee, thanks for the update there. Zadalis has played a lot of guard on the season. Graham, a little quick opening draw that didn't open at all. Nice job defensively. Randy Starks was there. Maryland had a little corner blitz. So number 30, Cox, coming from the short side of the field. For Maryland to get back into this ball game, the same is true. First, they got to stop, stop Rex Grossman. Two series he's been in, two touchdowns, and they need to take it away and get some points. Their offense got to go down and score with it. Well, they stopped Graham for a three-yard loss, so it brings up second down and 13. Jacobs and Caldwell to the near side. Gaffney out to the left. Grossman fires complete. Jacobs again. He's going to be in double figures pretty soon catching the football. He is in double figures catching the football. That's his 10th catch of the night. Watch him go down. Just go to hook. Goes inside the uh, defensive back, Wilson. You know, Rex Grossman's got a strong arm, and he's very, very accurate. And when you put those two things together and he slides around in the pocket, buys some time, he's got two more years of eligibility to, to work on improving. Steve says he needs to work on decisions and also getting rid of the football. And right now, Maryland needs to work on tackling because Graham just dragged some people with him down to a first and goal at the six. You saw Jacobs as he went off an Orange Bowl record receiving night already. And now here comes the cavalry. Yeah. And he charges all the way down to the six. First and goal Gators. They lead 28 to 10. Maryland needs a stop. They need a turnover. They need something to go right because their defense is being pushed around now by the Florida offense. Graham straight up the middle. Touchdown, Florida. yards nice blocking good power running and it's a touchdown gator Chandler in for the point after Florida's all-time leading scorer Chandler the kicker got another extra point up and good 11 minutes 22 seconds the FedEx Orange Bowl is all orange and blue right now. Graham on the ground they do it this time. And the Gators lead the Terrapins 35 to 10. Take one of the best linebackers in the country and then isolate your fullback as your lead blocker. Here it comes. Rob Roberts, 256 pounds on EJ Henderson, 243 pounds. It's a standoff, but because the offensive line got some movement in the other areas, there was gaping holes. And there's the guy of the night with a new Orange Bowl receiving record, 170 yards, and he's tied the reception, number of receptions for a FedEx Orange Bowl in a game that we saw. And it was Michigan and Alabama, and David Terrell just dominated. He had 150 yards and I believe three touchdowns in that game on his 10 catches. He was phenomenal, and so has Taylor Jacobs been this evening. So now it's a 35 to 10 hole that the Turtles find themselves in, and they're going to have to snap back. The Terrapins need to open up everything to try to get back in the game. And again, the kick return is nothing to write home about. Barely got him to the 20. 
you know, and Gary got popped at the end of it too. We've talked about the turnovers that the Florida offense gave Maryland defensively and then Maryland Maryland offense and then Florida defensively came on and 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 shut them down the fact is Florida has improved both on offense and defense from last year they won the, the SEC championship last year they've gotten better this year but they didn't have anything to show for right. it they didn't win a title they didn't get in the Rose Bowl they didn't get the championship they got nothing to show and better players Bruce Perry had he been able to pull out of that tackle he might have been off to a big gainer but Kennard Ellis was holding on for dear life our game summary it's 35 to 10 Florida 364 passing yards Berlin was pretty good when he was in there Grossman has been even better. Yeah, Berlin, six possessions and two touchdowns and three touchdowns on three possessions for Rex Grossman. Second down at five. Hill, option, the pitch to Perry. And he gets what he can, but he can't get a first down. Todd Johnson made the tackle from the secondary, and he's made a lot of them back there, number 26 this year. Todd Johnson is a two-time All-SEC performer. He led this team in tackles last year when Andre Davis was was injured. The free safety that just uh, runs from sideline to sideline. And over 100 tackles last year had 72 coming into this one. He stops Perry short of the first. It's third down and four. Hill getting some heat and now trying to weave his way through it. And I don't think he got the first down. He's about two feet short, I think. Maybe even more than that. Alex Brown, number 13, looking on there. He's the guy that shoestringed him. And Sean tried to scamper out of that trouble and get a first down. And uh, they're short because yeah. here comes the punting unit. Yeah. And you got to kick. There's no question here. You, you got to kick it away. John Hope, the defensive coordinator right there. Brother Brady is a defensive line coach at the University of Michigan. Took a lot of heat from Gator fans after Travis Stevens 226 yards and that loss to Tennessee. But you take that away and uh, this has been a heck of a defense this year. Uh, it's, it's been a great year for his defense. Ranked na Still nationally. Offense. Five yards down. Still close down. James sounds like he's been on Springer's show. That's James Springer, our referee. <laughs> Jim's working his last game. He's retiring after this, and he is working he'll, it hard. He'll remember this one, won't You're he? You're not kidding. I don't think he's going to be singing karaoke anywhere tonight. First penalty you know against Maryland. You know something we don't? <laughs> <laughs> Time to punt. Bernard. This is not... As good a kick as his first couple. Does take a Maryland bounce. Goes out of bounds at about the 26-yard line. Coming up on Monday Night Football, the Minnesota Vikings, Randy Moss. Will he want to play and play to full capacity? Chris Carter always does. And a former Viking assistant, the head man of the Ravens, the defending world champions. The Ravens and the Vikings. They'll be ready to play. They'll be ready to play. Oh, big Tony. Alan Fauci and Dennis and the gang will bring it to you Monday night on ABC. Fauci's Ducks looked pretty good yesterday. Yes, they did. They, they staked their what they hope can be a claim. Now they'll become Cornhusker fans. And here's another first down. Riche Caldwell. Does a nice job breaking a couple of tackles, and he gets a first down to pick up a 13. Talking about the Ducks, if they would have had, we see the replay, just that wide receiver screen again. It's a safe play, and when you, you can do this when the corners are playing off, and that's what the corners for Maryland are doing. They want to take, they want to take all the big plays away. Play soft, take away the big plays. Meanwhile, they're getting chipped to death. Yeah. play Graham and he's got plenty of room Ernest on the run inside the 40 all the way down to the 27 yard line 
Now it's coming from everywhere. 35-yard run by Graham. The only two games that Florida lost this year. He didn't play. Ernest Graham did not play. You know, he's, he's not a part of their passing game. He is their running game, though. And this, this, that's, what mean, that's what it means to have a guy that can run the football. As much as you can throw it, you still need to be able to run it. He had a touchdown on their last drive, and he just got him a huge first down at the 26. 114 yards for Graham now. Everybody get into the offensive flow. Grossman had a little trouble with the snap. No trouble with the throw. Whew. He put some Zuzu on that one to Gaffney. He's a homeboy, you know. He's from Bloomington, Indiana. he's an Indiana kid. Huh? Here's your two receivers. Caldwell to the outside. Gaffney, this is not a tough route. I mean, it's just a two-man route. And they run it so well. I mean, they, they've been running this all day. I mean, this is, uh, this Pitch is, and catch. This is uh, elementary. Down to the 11-yard line. Gillespie draw play. Nice spin. Double spin. Inside the 10. He's in. Touchdown. What a run. Highlight film right there. Two great moves. Both spins bought him a little bit of room. <laughs> Steve Spurrier just smiling. Watch this run. You don't teach this stuff. This is instinctive. That one was first. Then another one. He says, I'll do it again. And this will definitely be on the Florida Gators highlight film right here. Wow. The dancing in the halftime show wasn't any better than that. Extra point is good. Robert Gillespie. One more time. He's not <laughs> big. He's only 5'9". 11 yards for the touchdown. It is 42 to 10. Gators. FedEx Orange Bowl, this ABC Sports exclusive, brought to you by FedEx, Brown, International, Online, or Express. There's a FedEx for that. Honda, a versatile family of cars, minivans, and SUVs. Black Hawk Down, coming soon to a theater near you. And your Morgan Stanley financial advisor, who will never let you lose sight of what you're investing for. Gillespie with some great dance moves a moment ago for his 11-yard touchdown. And you even saw the reaction of Steve Spurrier as we went to break with that look of, wow. <laughs> he, said, he, I don't, he said, I don't know where he got those, yep. but he didn't get that from my teaching. Uh -uh. Rich Parson is back deep. Matt Petrovich to kick. Again, high kick. Parson from the seventh. Trying to get ahead of Steen now. Steen was taken out of him in a hurry. Petrovich, the kicker, got down there and made the hit. Speaking of hits, Swanee's with a guy that uh, delivered a few in his day. <laughs> That's right. Sugar Ray has delivered a few. Sugar Ray, I know you're a sports fan. Which team are you rooting for down here? Well, I don't think I have to say that. Uh, from Maryland. And uh, it's pretty disastrous right now. Well, they, they, they got a chance to come back still. You've got a partnership with ESPN, too. Sugar Ray... Boxing. Promotions? Yeah, Sugar Ray Boxing. In fact, the first Friday of every month, Sugar Ray Leonard Boxing presents Friday Night Fights. I have a great relationship with ESPN, and I'm so excited for another fight coming up this Friday night on ESPN 2. And that's a championship fight? It's a championship fight, yes. It's about putting on exciting fights, competitive fights. Okay, well, what you have to do right now is see if you can go over and talk to Ralph Regan and see if you can teach him how to fight a little bit harder and get your Maryland team back in this ball game. I'll do that, man. Thank you so much. Good luck to you. My boys is gone. Sounds like he was out with James Springer, our referee. <laughs> uh, one of the great fighters of all time. Ray Leonard, former undisputed welterweight and middleweight champion, and now along with ESPN, his own boxing promotion here in Miami. And we thank him for joining us. 
I think he'd have to come up and wait, or Swanee would have to go down to Welder. I think Swanee's got the reach on him, too, just a little bit there. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know, though. It's, my man Swanee can move. Yep, he can. He can dance. He's a lot younger than uh, the champ. Yeah, I, I, I haven't had many fights, and a few I did. <laughs> I'm not sure I won them all, boys. <laughs> I can't even win fights at our meetings before the games. <laughs> at the 30-yard line, third down along two. Swanee's got a little bit of a glass jaw. Yeah, it could I be. Think one blow to the chin and he's down. The option goes straight ahead with the fullback being the first option. And James Lynch is close, but I don't know if he got it. Guys, I, I, I got a little question for you. Um, what do you think the biggest comeback has been for Maryland? Well, I don't want you to think about it for too long. <laughs> <laughs> it was in 1984. They were playing in the Orange Bowl against Miami. Oh, uh, yeah. Frank Rich was their quarterback. They were down 31 to nothing at half, and they came back to win that ball game 42 to nothing. Well, Frank Reich, and uh, that was against Bernie Kosar and company, and that was one of the great comebacks ever in any football game at any level. You see he's about the length of the football shy. That was 42 to 40. Sorry about that, Brad. And, of course, Frank Reich and Neil O'Donnell and our buddy Boomer Esiason, probably the biggest names ever to play quarterback for yep. Maryland. And uh, yep. Ralph was on the staff when Boomer was there. And we saw them chatting before the game. All the Maryland alums so thrilled to be here, but obviously not thrilled with what's going on right now with six minutes left in the third. It's still been a great year for Maryland and Ralph Friedgen and... Uh, and his staff and players. Uh, they hadn't been in the bowl game since 1990 at the Independence Bowl. Not a major bowl in a long time after that. And it's he's turned this program around. Certainly was the uh, Cinderella team of the uh, 19 uh, of the 2001 season. And, and 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 you can't you can't say enough about all the years he waited for a head coaching job. Yep. All the jobs that were passed by. And finally, he gets one back at his alma mater, and he just turns the program around. Isn't it amazing that a guy that, as they got the first down on fourth down, you obviously saw, may, waited 32 years as an assistant to become a head coach, and Larry Coker waited all those years as an assistant, and he's got his team in the national championship yeah. game tomorrow. Hill off play action. Look out from behind. Hit by Alex Brown. And they're going to say incomplete pass. Alex has been waiting to come flying around that corner all night. He's been close. He's had a hold of him. He's had a hold of his feet. And finally, he gets a pop on him here. From the top of your screen, he runs around Brooks. It was pretty close. Boy, you're not kidding. Yeah, it was pretty close. More like a fumble than a pass to me, but let's get another angle. Well, they're giving the benefit of the doubt, yeah, I guess. That's a judgment call by the referee right behind him. So Maryland may have gotten a break there, and now Hill from the gun on second down. Steps up and fires back. Nice throw. Gary spins across the 50. Julian Gary, their leading receiver, a 20-yard pickup. His second catch of the night. Gary just sits down in the open area. Nice pitch and catch. We're talking about Sean Hill. You know, he was only under this system with Ralph Friedgen for one year. He's played with three different, for the last three years, he's had three different offensive systems. That's like learning three different languages that you have to call plays on. Here's the option. The late pitch a little bit low, but handled pretty well by Rich Parson. And run out of bounds at about the 43. And you know, Sean Hill says, man, I'm, I'm agreeing with Coach Friedgen. I wish I could be around another year, too. I'd really enjoy to stick around with these guys, you know, for some more, you know, a couple more years. And uh, see what they could do with, with myself. I feel like I've developed tremendously in the last 12 months as a quarterback just under their tutelage, and I know that I have a lot to learn, and I have uh, really, you know, a long ways to go, um, you know, in, in becoming a quarterback. Uh, I feel like I'm a very young senior, if that's possible. A good line, a very young senior. They yeah. go straight ahead, fullback. Chad Killian, and now Maryland's got a little bit of something going here as they mix up their offense pretty well. Pick up of nine by the fullback. The fridge, the fridge said uh, about Hill. He says, "I only regret that I don't have another year or two to work with him because he is bright and he's intelligent." And uh, I think Ralph Friedgen can can, can turn uh, any gifted athlete with some ability into a pretty good quarterback. I think he did that at Georgia Tech with uh, Godson and Hamilton mm -hmm. before that. And movement, Florida jumps 
C.J. Brooks may have come out of his stance, and Bobby McCray came flying across the line, so this is going to go against Maryland. You know, Sean Hill, again, and talking about him, he's a guy who wasn't given much of a chance to be a quarterback. As you look in on a bright orange monster over the Orange Bowl tonight, the Monster.com blimp providing us with our great views above. I'll finish my thought on Sean Hill after this snap. First down at 15. Three wide outs. Gives it off to Riley. That didn't work for much. Only got about two yards. But Sean Hill was not recruited basically by anybody. There's a couple teams that were considering it as a punter. He went to Hutchinson, Kansas Community College. He had to beat six other quarterbacks out of the job just to get to the point he's at. And then coming to Maryland. And he's out of a little town in Kansas, Parsons, Kansas. And I know everybody in Parsons is watching tonight. I say little hometown. Heck, it's four times bigger than my hometown. <laughs> yeah. 12,000 people. St. Charles. Here's Hill. Quick throw. Got it out to his tight end. Matt Murphy knocked out of bounds by Benny Alexander. And it's going to bring up third down at about five. Hey, Brad, just a little add-on to that story about Sean Hill. Uh, you know, even though he got recruited to Maryland, and Maryland came to that little junior college, they weren't looking for Sean Hill. They were looking for another player, and the, and the coach said, hey, I got a quarterback. Yep. Think you can take him? They were looking for a DB. And all of a sudden, he found a home, and he found a system, and he found a first-year coach. And they found 10 wins along the way to win the ACC title. Third down and five. This is two-down territory for them. They give it to Perry. Well, maybe it's not. Man, he got handed his helmet right there on the play by Aquendo Johnson. Marcus, who started at defensive end tonight, and he's basically a linebacker, an outside linebacker playing that defensive end spot. Three of the top four defensive ends for Florida are out for one reason or another. That's why they moved the linebacker, Kendall Johnson. Darrell Lee out with a wrist injury, and Kennard Ellis had a knee scope. And so they are a little bit thin at that spot. And of course, they got one of the great ones in Alex Brown on the other side. Fourth down. They're going, and here they come. Blitz coming from Florida. Hill running for his life, had it batted down, and it's Alex Brown, who I just mentioned. Florida will take over on downs. Well, they sent the house after Sean, and it paid off. Try as he might, he couldn't buy himself enough time, and he couldn't get it over the long arms of number 13. Florida takes over when we come back. as much for Maryland backers to cheer about than they had hoped. 42 to 10 they trail here with 3-11 left in the third quarter. And part of the problem for Maryland has been going up against a Florida defense that has been relentless. They have chased and battered Sean Hill. Florida's offense gets all of the attention, but this defense is ranked in the top 15 nationally in every defensive category. They've intercepted Hill. They've knocked him down. Gus Scott with a hit there. And also Benny Alexander, part of a horn perfect defense for Florida tonight in this FedEx Orange Bowl. And John, and John Hoke is the defensive coordinator. He's in the middle of that somewhere. Yeah, he's in there. First and ten now for the offense. Grossman on the give to Graham, who's already over 100 yards, and he's got way more than that. Ernest down the sideline. All the way down near the 33-yard line. Ernest hadn't played for a while. He's hungry. 35 more yards for him. He's been out injured, talking to lawyers and all that stuff. Yeah, he, he's been busy. <laughs> of course, well, he's running him. good tonight. Yes, he is. And we're glad to see it. You bet. Season high for Graham, 149 yards. Picked glad. a nice night to do it. Yeah, we're glad to see it, not because it's against Maryland, but because he had an injured knee and was out for a while. And the uncertainty of whether he was going to need surgery. Grossman, Gaffney, touchdown. 
33 yards right on the money. Would you say everybody's in the act? Maybe uh, Gaffney's going to go straight down the field. Maybe, maybe Spurrier should bench Grossman every game. <laughs> He's played five possessions and has five TDs. He is... What is he? He's 18 of 23, 230 yards, and three touchdowns. Chandler's extra point is good. With 2.52 left, there's the third one up close and personal. Gaffney from 33 yards out. It's 49 to 10 Gators. This was a scene just a moment ago after Grossman had thrown his second, uh, his third touchdown pass, rather, yeah. Rex, of the night. Rex is saying to Brock, hey, you go ahead and start every game. <laughs> I'll come in and I'll throw five touchdown passes or five scores and three touchdown passes right in a row. It's going to be a big comeback Maryland's going to need. This is the one Swanee talked about moments ago. Frank Reich took over with Maryland in a big hole, and he got hot. Frank and boy, did he ever. Play action. Throwing deep, and he's got a man out there, Hill! Frank Hill on the kill, and a touchdown! And Bobby Ross getting carried off. Uh, Ralph Bregen, Bobby Ross's mentor, and uh, worked for him at Maryland the first go-around before going on to Georgia Tech, the San Diego Chargers, back to Georgia Tech, and then on to the head coaching job. But right now, his team's 39 down. With just under three to go. Here in the third quarter. You know why they let this guy kick? It's not the short high kicks. He's got six tackles tonight. <laughs> I have never seen a kicker have more than two tackles in a game. Watch this. Nobody blocks the kicker. Petrovich, bang. No, no. Oh, that hurts. Nobody blocks the kicker, you know, because the, normally these guys kick it sideways and says, I kick the football and I'll be the uh, safety man. Uh, he, he was a linebacker in, in high school and he's playing like one tonight. He's going to end up being one of the leading tacklers. That's just unbelievable. Play action to Riley. Look out. Down goes Hill and it's Alex Brown again. And now Alex putting on a little bit of a show. He said, you know, I'm so sick of listening to my brother talk. His brother was a linebacker at Maryland four or five years ago. And he said he's been talking smack all week ever since we knew we were going to play the Terrapins. And he said, I'm going to put all that to rest. <laughs> There's the guy that coached him so well this year, Daryl Hundley. He says, Coach Hundley, or Ricky Hundley, is, uh, he said he's even taught me how to eat better. Got my body leaner, got faster. Here's a pitch on the option. There's a clip. Parsons. Parsons done some nice things tonight. And as Bob said, he will be a big part of their offense in seasons to come, you can bet. But you know, when you when you play defense for Florida, you don't get much. <laughs> I mean, you, everything goes with, with the offense, the quarterbacks, right. and Coach Spurrier that the defensive coaches don't get recognized much. There's John Hope, the defensive coordinator, been here for a few years. You know, you look back at the other defensive coordinators that Florida has had, though, and they've moved on and done pretty well. Bob Stoops, won Stoops. national championship. Bob Stoops is a head coach, national champions of Oklahoma. And then you, you've got... Um, Bob Pruitt, who was the who was the head, head coach, coach at Marshall. Marshall. Right. Ron Zook, Zook, who is the uh, defensive coordinator with the New Orleans Saints. Yep. And then uh, Jim Bates, who is a defensive coordinator right here in town with the Miami Dolphins. So being a defensive coordinator for Steve Spurrier, I guess, in time, pays off. Yeah, I think so. You're right, though. It's like being Tiger Woods caddy. You don't get a lot of... Respect for what you've done, even if you did a good job. Mike Mateel makes the hit on Riley. I see where uh, I see where head coach Spurrier is going to be the offensive coordinator for Bob Stoops in the, the hula bowl. The hula bowl. That ought to be interesting. Yeah. And Steve said, "Well, I reckon he'll let me call the ball plays." And 
pretty much anything I want to call, yeah. he'll probably let me. Leave it to my, uh, he'll handle the defense. And if <laughs> you want to go for it on fourth down, he'll probably let me go. And if he doesn't, that's okay, too. <laughs> Second down and nine. Hill down the middle, got his tight end, Murphy again. Matt's second catch of this quarter. And it might bring the quarter to a close. Just before it drops down, Brad, let me tell you that whatever Maryland's going to do, they may have to do it without Bruce Perry. He has re-injured that abdominal strain, and he is very, very questionable as to whether he'll come back. Okay, that was a big question mark up until the past four days or so, whether or not he was going to be healthy enough to go. And he did start. He did some nice things. Here's a streak down the sideline incomplete. And that will bring the third quarter to a close. Another quarter that belonged to the Gators as they've stretched their lead now to 49 to 10. ABC Sports presentation of the FedEx Orange Bowl will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Is the FedEx Orange Bowl. Our FedEx ground and air stats tonight. Florida's ground game, mostly Ernest Graham. Well over 100-yard night and two touchdowns. Maryland held to 69. And our air stats, well, as you might guess, Florida way over their average for each game. They average 405 a game. 425 tonight is an Orange Bowl record. Sean Hill to throw. Crossing pattern as Jafar Williams. And he's down to about the 35-yard line. That's a first down. Todd Johnson made the tackle at the end of the play. Jafar Williams had a 64-yard touchdown catch earlier in the ballgame. Yeah, he's he's actually probably feeling very fortunate to be able to play this game. At one time, his whole body cramps up so bad he couldn't go out and play. The people very often thought his life was in jeopardy his freshman year found out he just got overexcited so he has to take medications so he stays calm Brett. yep just before each game and it works and it worked very well for him this year he caught 39 passes coming in and this time it's Daryl Whitmer and there's Perry as Swanee said his night is probably done he's putting his helmet back on as though he's trying to uh, let us know he's maybe ready but he's got the pants loosened up there and Continuing to try to keep warm. That ain't good. Nope. You got your pants loose, and that's probably a good sign you ain't going in. <laughs> Either that or you had a big Christmas dinner. <laughs> it's Hill on second down. That's a first down toss down near the 20-yard line. Whitmer again, second straight catch for him. And Brad, this, this Maryland offense uh, returns eight of the 11 starters. Of course, Sean Hill will graduate, but uh, it's a good nucleus for next year's ball club. Second year under the system. Uh, I hope the alumni don't expect a 10-1 yeah. and one or a 10-2 and two season every year, but we got a lot of players coming back. Hill throws. Good throw down to the 15, make it the 14 to Julian Gary. Maybe Pop Berlin should consider uh, transferring to Maryland. <laughs> there you go. Well, I'll tell you what, the quarterback in Ralph Friedgen's system has a good time because you do a little bit of everything. Some option, some pro offense, some shotguns, some spread, a little bit of everything. Second down at four. Knocked down that time. He and Scott got a hand on that. Knocked it down. Sean is 16 at 27, 200 yards. A touchdown and an interception. He came into the ball game averaging 216 yards passing. Maryland very balanced rushing yardage to passing yardage all season. 12th play of the drive. They need this one and they got it. Jafar Williams again. And it is first and goal Maryland. Williams approaching a 100-yard night as far as a receiver, including a touchdown. This is uh, very similar to some of the stuff that, that Florida has been running, the little wide receiver screen, little slip, slip screen, different variation. First and goal at the 8-yard line. Just under 13 minutes to play. Florida with a big lead, but Maryland driving offensively. 
Nice play fake by Hill. Gonna roll the throw. Now he's gonna tuck it. Get what he can, which was almost three yards. Linesman puts his foot down just outside the five-yard line. Ralph Bridget who signed a new 10-year contract late in this uh, season, actually between the end of the year and when this bowl game took place. Ralph said one of the first things he did when he got there was had, had, had the workouts, winter workouts at 5 o'clock in the morning. Said nobody complained. Here's Riley on the pitch. Sticks his head in there and didn't quite get to the end zone. You talk about some hitting wow. going on inside the two-yard line. That couldn't be a farther play away from our booth, and we could definitely yeah. almost feel it up yeah. here. Lito Shepard. That's manual number four. Shepard is three. Stood him up. They did the they did the most of the hitting. Third down and goal. At the one. Hill on the give to Riley. Touchdown. Maryland score. So Mark Riley, the senior, who had been hoping a long time for an opportunity like tonight. And there, how you like that? Coach hey. Preacher says that's a way to not yeah. quit, fellas. There you go. See, he knows he's not going to win this game. But it's. he said early on, he says, you know, he said, I had a lot of character kids. They got up at 5, 5 o'clock and worked out over the winter. He said some of them didn't get, get the message, and I didn't want them on the squad That's anyway. Right. Novak hits the point after. Just under 12 minutes to play. Riley, the senior, takes it, and it's 49-17. championship series for the national title Miami and Nebraska Juan Gonzalez their sensational senior tackle one of the characters we talked to many times this year and he said we're gonna win them all I've always told the guys I'm like you know what I know we're gonna win every single game this year I don't know how I don't know if it's gonna be a come from behind win I don't know if we're gonna be up you know 50 to 0 you know at half but I just told them I know with the type of character we have on this team that we're going to win every single game. We'll find out if they win every game. Nebraska stands in their way. Otherwise, Miami will be the national champs he yet his, again. He got his haircut. You know, I realized that. I saw him the other day, and I thought, I thought he'd wait for you and I and Swanee to send him the money. Because yeah. he said to us earlier this season, I'm not getting my haircut. Now, here's an onside kick by Maryland. They got it. Flags are down. I think they were offside. I think the ball traveled far enough, but they might have been offside. Yeah, you're right. So Juan said, when we get out to the Rose Bowl, I'll get my hair cut. He said, maybe you guys will send me the money because it wouldn't be an NCAA violation by then by the time the game's over. I thought he was going to keep it till it was over. Well, you see, he cleaned up a little bit while, while he was out good. there. He's looking clean. Yes, he is. Now the discussion going on here among the officials. <laughs> and... Well, it might be Maryland ball. No. Nope. It is offside. Defense. Five yard penalty. Free kick. He meant offense. I think Jim is hoping that they don't have too many more penalties that he has to announce. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, they get another opportunity to try it again if they so choose. Yeah, Steve wants the option to take right. the ball where it is. Mm -hmm. Of course, Maryland recovered it. This, this is a deal where he goes 10 yards and the kicker's going to recover it and all the other guys come down and block the Florida players. It's a good play, but Maryland was offside. Well, Florida doesn't expect them to do it again because they didn't expect it that time either, but they've got everybody in their normal positions. So Nick Novak will try it again one way or the other. Five guys between them and 10 yards, so they kick it deep. And it'll go down to the 10-yard line to Gillespie. And Robert got up to the 30, 31-yard line. Coming up on Sunday night, 
The Tampa Bay Buccaneers need to slow down Donovan McNabb and the Eagles to avenge last year's playoff loss in Philadelphia on ESPN Sunday Night Football, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Warren Sapp will be doing some talking. Yep, there'll be, there'll be, uh, there'll be some shenanigans going on in that <laughs> ball game. There'll be some uh, hoaxes axes going on. <laughs> they don't know whether they're really going to run a play or not. At the 31, they come with Caldwell. Isolated one-on-one -on -one out there as Grossman had a nice look to the right and then came back to the left. Rishi Caldwell continues to add to Florida's passing numbers. The last five possessions under Rex Grossman, yep. all touchdowns. Yep. Pretty impressive. And three of those are touchdown passes. Yep. So he didn't start, but he's having one of those Orange Bowl record kind of nights anyway. Our first and ten. Brought to us by Monster.com tonight. On second and short, they don't need much for a first and ten, and they've got a bunch. Here goes Gillespie again, and he ran right by the safety. Down the sideline, and he's dragged down at about the ten-yard line. It was Denard Wilson, the corner, who looked like he had an angle out there, and Robert just ran right by that angle. Fifty yards. Graham is the bigger and stronger at 215. Gillespie only 5'9 and 190, and he has blazing speed. Gets around the outside, and you know he would love to have run that one in. Yep. He got it all the way down just outside the 10-yard line. Career long. And they are going to call it first and goal, so it's right at the 10. That's 192 yards rushing for Florida already here this evening. They came in only averaging 122. It is first and goal. Grossman pump fake, now zips it. Incomplete, intended for Caldwell. O'Connellawan was there defensively on the corner, and it's second down. Florida has thrown more touchdown passes than any other team in the nation. And coming in had allowed allowed fewer touchdown passes than any other team in the nation other than Miami. Miami was tied with Florida at five. Touchdowns allowed passing. Gillespie sets up in the backfield. Maryland might bring some pressure. Grossman has time though and lofts it to the corner. He's got his fourth touchdown pass of the night. And this one is Carlos Perez. Easy pitch and catch. Good route, perfect pass. Two receivers, wide side of the field. Slot receiver just runs a little corner route. Chandler for the point after. We now have a record amount of Orange Bowl points by two teams combined. But most of the points are Florida. Maryland's defense trying to slow down the Gators and just can't. 56 to 17. Gators in front. FedEx Orange Bowl, this ABC Sports exclusive, brought to you by FedEx, Ground International, Online or Express. There's a FedEx for that. Nokia, the ability to personalize your phone, your life, your world. Nokia, connecting people. Chrysler, drive equals love. And AT&T Long Distance, nothing else has the power of your voice. Well, the Gators are going to be tasting those oranges shortly. 10-16 remaining, and they lead 56-17. Grossman, four touchdown passes, and did not start the ball game. He's been in on six drives. He's led touchdowns on all six, and all have been 60 yards or more. At about the two-yard line, on the run back out near the 20. That's where Maryland will have to work now with 10 minutes remaining in the ballgame. The 29th 
annual American Music Awards with Brooks and Dunn, Cher, Lenny Kravitz, Kid Rock, Shaggy, Britney Spears, everybody's going to be there. Hosted by Jenny McCarthy and Sean P. Diddy Combs next Wednesday at 8, 7 Central on ABC. I can't keep Sean's Puff Daddies and P. Diddy's and everything straight. Somebody changed your name, didn't they? Yep, he did. A couple times. See, I knew that. That was pretty good. Very good. At the 20-yard line. <laughs> Back to throw is Hill. Got a man open and got Parson deep down the middle. And across the 45-yard line. Pick up a 27. Maryland was, you know, they had a great year. They've, 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 no matter how this game turns out, they've had an outstanding year. One of the reasons they had a great year, they didn't have any injuries. Everybody played every game. The only starter that wasn't around for a few games was O'Connell mm -hmm. and he missed like seven games. But everybody on offense and on defense, and how often have we seen that? Last year was Oklahoma. Yep. They went through the whole year, won a national championship, didn't have anybody hurt. One of the years Wisconsin went to the Rose Bowl and Northwestern, when they went to the Rose Bowl, they didn't get anybody hurt. Yeah. That's yeah. a big factor. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Sean Hill is not done playing. He's done a heck of a job this year, too. And while they're going to come up short to Florida, they still have not given up. They're still moving the ball. Yeah, this is, the like we said, the first bowl game for these Maryland players. Hill, but it won't be the last. Ducks under the rush, throws incomplete. He intended Julian Gary, the closest guy. Bob said to Sean the other day, he said, uh, you know, you're going to leave behind a legacy. You're the guy that brought Maryland football back. He said, I don't think anybody's going to remember my name. He said, as long as I can just be part of this team and they remember this team, that's good enough for me. And then as he was walking out of the room, he kind of came back and said, you know, as a matter of fact, I was at a luncheon the other day and a big Maryland alum was sitting next to me the whole time during lunch. What did he call him? And he said, as soon as we got up to leave, he said, nice meeting you, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't always get the respect, but he's got the respect of the Maryland fans this year. 8.58 remaining in a ball game. It's 56-17. What a year for Maryland football. It was a year to fear the turtle as the Turfs out of their shell. Their only blemish a loss to Florida State in a game they were into the fourth quarter. A dominating defense led by the player of the year and an offense that did just enough led by Sean Hill. And a great win at the end against NC State that gave them that celebration in the locker room as Atlantic Coast Conference champions first time since 1985. And we congratulate them on that accomplishment and getting to this Orange Bowl. It's not going to go like they wanted it to, but uh, they have had one heck of a season. Hill down to about the 45. And when they won that last a uh, ACC title in 85, Bobby Ross was the head coach and Ralph Friedgen was the offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. Their first Orange Bowl since 1956. In fact, their first major bowl of any kind since the 77 Cotton Bowl. So they have had a great time down here. They've enjoyed their time. They put their work in. They really cherished every moment, and they're just not going to cherish basically three quarters of this football game. 8-24 remaining in the ball game. Florida in command. Looking in on what turned out to be a beautiful night at Pro Players Stadium for the FedEx Orange Bowl, a monster.com blimp covering tonight's Orange Bowl. 130 feet long, 40 feet tall, 2,700 pounds. Monster.com reminds you to think big when it comes to your career and your life. 73,640 in attendance tonight. Watching Florida en route to their 10th win of the season in this FedEx Orange Bowl. All right, Sean. Sean Hill. <laughs> Keep on working it, son. <laughs> There's, He's uh, not done, and you know, the last time he carried it, Marcus Oquendo Johnson, you might have seen help him up as if to say, nice job, man, you are not quitting, and he's still not. And you run the option, and they're going to cover the pitch man and force this quarterback to carry it, and he does, and he carries it very nicely. Three wideouts now, and Mark Riley remains the tailback with Bruce Perry out with that strained abdominal muscle. Hill 
Going to throw a middle screen to his tight end, Matt Murphy. That's a good-looking play. Nice Almost play. got a first down, too. Nice play. These are some of the things they probably could have done with a little more success had they either gotten the lead or been able to stay in the game. And now Florida has softened a little bit defensively. It's like it's like Ralph says, uh, you know, we're going to come in, we're going to fire our shots, we're going to take, we're going to take our, we're not going to come in and play defensively. We're going to come and do, but their defense just didn't hold up and yep. their offense didn't score when they had the opportunity. Second down, a yard. Hill stands in over the middle, incomplete, intended for Whitmer. And Gus Scott got his head in on that one. So it'll bring up third down and a yard. You know, I was, I was, I was referring to it a little bit earlier, but I was going to say if, uh, if, the, if the people would have voted for the Heisman Trophy after all of the bowl games, mm -hmm. what, well, what, Joey, what, good, he? Well, what Joey Harrington did at Oregon uh, yesterday, uh, you know, I don't think many of the people in the East got to see Joey Harrington and the U and University of Oregon play. And you wonder if Rex Grossman's performance tonight would have yeah. closed that 72-point gap yes. with Eric Crouch. Yes, for both of them. Mm -hmm. Eric's got his chance exactly. tomorrow night. Exactly, he's got his chance tomorrow <laughs> night. There's the Heisman voting. Closest in a long time. Crouch, Grossman, Dorsey. I think, I think... I think tomorrow night's game is is a great matchup. Nebraska has won three national championships. What in the last uh, seven years? I think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, Miami's won four in the last 18 years. And you know, <laughs> I was reading something. Keith Jackson, who's going to be calling the game, said said early. He says, "Hey, the rules of engagement <laughs> were set early on." That's right. And we did the you know it's the BCS, and that was the way it was going to be played out. And that was the way it is. Nebraska is the number two team, and we should, uh, you know, Nebraska is a darn good football you team. You bet. I they mean, only lost one game. We don't have to defend Nebraska. I mean, they had one bad outing. It happened to be in November instead of in September. They beat everybody else. They played by 11 points or more. Yeah. They had one bad game. They got clubbed by Colorado's ground game. And, and it's not like... Nebraska was went in the you know was was waiting there. Everybody else had a shot. They all fell by the wayside late in the season. That's right. On the option, and they end around. Not able to keep his footing. Jafar Williams and Alex Brown's part of the reason. He's had a heck of a game. He is the career sack leader at the University of Florida. As you mentioned, he's the defensive player of the year in the SEC. You know, two seasons ago, he sprung on the scene when he had that five-sack game against Tennessee, and then everybody felt that his game fell off a little bit last year. He's put it back together this season, though. You know he's a quarterback in high school. Yes, he, he was. And a fine quarterback at that. <laughs> <laughs> you knew Swatty was going to have to say something about that. <laughs> hey, one, one of the big things about Alex Brown this year is that uh, with Rick Hunley there kind of being on his case a little bit, he dropped a substantial amount of pounds. Mm -hmm. Wait, he was up to uh, over 270. Uh, couldn't play the whole ball game. His conditioning was poor from last year. And in the offseason, he got the weight down. Rick Hunley was on him. I think he taught him better technique and made him a better overall player. So now his career comes to an end. He's played all the years he could play for Florida, had great success. Now he looks at a brighter career in the National Football League. You're right. Six tackle night for him, and he's created more havoc than just those six tacklers, too. Third down and 20. Flags down. Haven't been a lot of penalties tonight. You know, we got to, you got to give our hats off to uh, Steve Spurrier, too, for the outstanding job that he has done since he came to Florida. Before Steve came to Florida in 1990, they had never won a conference title. He won, in his first seven years, he won the title six of those seven years. One year he was, wasn't eligible to win it, but uh, they won the title six of seven years on the field. The frustrating thing for Steve is, of the last five years, they've only won one SEC title. And that's got to be really bugging him. I mean, they had a better team this year. Their offense was back and better. The defense was back and better. And they didn't win anything. Hill, deep middle. Dangerous throw. Nothing but white jerseys except Jafar Williams, the intended receiver. And there comes a late flag. Maybe too many white jerseys.
So Maryland might still have some hope here on this particular drive. Looks like it's going to be pass interference. At least that's certainly in the vicinity. And so that's a call. Now this is Steve's 150th game at Florida and about to win his 122nd as you see another look at the replay. That's a good call. Yeah, a little early hit. And Steve's been in this game three times. Yep. Once as a player and once as a coach before tonight. He won the game as a player ending his Heisman season of 66 with a 67 Orange Bowl win over Georgia Tech and then uh, I mentioned earlier the 99 game against Syracuse they throttled Donovan McNabb and and Syracuse in that one so he's going to be perfect in the Orange Bowl after about six more minutes. Again the man in motion was Williams. Sean Hill fires complete to Gary inside the 10 at about the nine a little bit short of the first down. 67 there Fowler the center you know center's got to be bright call the plays on the offensive line he's a member of the Maryland chess club. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and when he says checkmate you get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. and, and guys he he might be the smaller of the offensive linemen but I guarantee he's the biggest guy in the chess club. Yeah no <laughs> doubt about that. And on the whole circuit for that matter. Yeah. Hill throwing to the corner. Not quite. Whitmer had about a half step, but it was pretty good coverage. Ratliff was out there, and it's incomplete. We mentioned Ralph Region. That new contract came when Georgia Tech was looking for a coach, and they came thinking about wanting him to come back. And Debbie Yow, the athletic director, says, I think we better nip this in the bud. Uh -huh. So a new 10-year deal for uh, Ralph to stick around. And he says that's the only place he wants to be, and he wants to finish coaching there in College Park. Well, the ACC has, what, five universities now? And Riley has got, got there. it. Touchdown. Yeah. Good for him. Mark Riley, the senior. Speaking of Debbie Al, the athletic director, she made a promise to this incoming class when they were freshmen. She has a SEC championship watch when she was the Lady Gators coach. She's been wearing that thing forever. She told these guys when they were freshmen, if you ever win an ACC title, I'll get a new watch. Mark Riley went up to her the other day and says, Miss Yao, it's time for a new watch. We're going to get you an ACC championship watch. <laughs> That's great. That's she great. said, I didn't know anybody remembered, but uh -huh. Riley did. And Riley's got two touchdowns tonight in his final game. For the Terrapins. That kept an 80 yard march. That is a good drive. Maryland going for two. And Riley stays in there. Murphy, the tight end, and Gary Whitmer and Monroe, the wide receivers. And a two point conversion try here in the final five minutes. Murphy on the move. Maybe he'll look to him. Across the middle, and Whitmer. Had it in his hands and couldn't hold it. So it remains 56 to 23. But Maryland, as they've done all season, showing resiliency and hanging in tough, continuing to try to score here in the waning moments in a losing effort, soon to be a losing effort. Five minutes left. You're watching ABC's coverage of the FedEx Orange Bowl. Florida Gators will finish in the top five for the first time since 98. They started the season as everybody's number one, and Marquand Manuel, their emotional leader, helped the Gator fans see some superlative games again from Gaffney and Grossman, the runner-up to the Heisman Trophy. The defense we've talked about tonight, led by Alex Brown, they were sensational all season long. Record-setting in their performance, except Tennessee was the one that got away, and instead of heading to the SEC championship and possibly the Rose Bowl. It was the FedEx Orange Bowl and they're going to be the champions in five minutes and they'll be 10 and two on the season. And they're certainly not going to. Well, you said 10 and two. Their, yeah. their, their national uh, image, that's for sure. This will be the ninth year 
ninth year of Steve's 12 years that they've won 10 games or more. And that's just incredible. That's incredible. So when you consider what Tennessee did in their ball game and what Oregon did in their ball game and what Florida has done, those are three of the top eight teams as far as BCS rankings uh, that are going to move up. Colorado will slip down a little bit. And of course, tomorrow night, everybody will be watching the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. We'll be watching, too. Our buddies, Keith Jackson, Tim Brandt, Todd Harris, and our partner, Swanee's going cross country to join them. They'll bring you the national championship tomorrow night right here on ABC. And uh, we wish those guys well and have fun, fellas, in that ball game. Thank you very much. Offensively, when you look at the teams, they get it done in different ways. Number one rushing unit is Nebraska's. Look at that. With Nebraska's rushing number one, passing 110th in the nation. Miami's more balanced. We saw Miami five times in person this year. And I tell you, Nebraska's got a sneaky passing attack. Yes, though. they do. They got a good tight end in Wistrom that uh, I think I think might uh, slip down the center of the field a couple of times and have a shot at a, a long, uh, long pass. Grossman pump fakes one way, comes back across the middle, and that is incomplete. Almost in and out of the hands of Troop, the tight end. Four touchdown passes, ties the Orange Bowl record as Rex is 20 of 27 for 248 yards and four touchdowns, and that is in a two bad, and a half quarters of five. day. That's, that's low. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. We've had some records go by the boards. We were talking all week that we were going to get some yards and some points in this game. We were right in both counts. Rex's uh, average is 350 yards, 354 yards per game passing. So that's why he's still throwing the football here. <laughs> Here's a little quick opening draw to Gillespie, who had one of the highlight runs of the night that I know you'll see a few times uh, in the next couple of days. The record that Rex tied belongs to Danny Cannell, former Seminole of Florida State. His performance in this FedEx Orange Bowl. Down to 4.25 in the clock running. 56 to 23, third down at 14. Gillespie goes in motion now and sets up as a wide receiver to the right side. Grossman wants to go that way. And he threw way too far in front of him. So that'll bring on the punting unit. And the Florida punter isn't the guy that has to be very busy all season long. <laughs> Matt Leach, what is this, maybe his 27th kick of the year, something like that. I think he, he, he punts less than any punter in the SEC. Yeah, 26 punts coming into this one. And they haven't had to punt a lot tonight. Rich Parson waits back at the 40. They're going to try to bring a little bit of heat here, it appears. Although Florida continues making adjustments. And he hangs one up high. Not going to be returnable. And it takes a great Florida bounce. All the way down to the 29-yard line. So we've got 3 minutes 53 seconds to go in the ballgame. It's a new year and it's a new season, but still the same bad attitude. Dennis Leary's back. The job starting Wednesday, January 16th at 9.30, 8.30 Central on ABC. That was probably my favorite news show last what's, year. What's I like that one. Well, no, what's that, Wednesday? It's, yeah. yeah. Let's see, we watch, uh, we watch uh, the practice on Sunday night. Yeah. And then we watch NYPD Blue. On Tuesday. On Tuesday night. And then we watch the job Wednesday. You know, we got the job on Wednesday. And usually I got a basketball game in there someplace, so I have to tape one or two of them. Look out, Sean. Trying to get a screen pass away and finally did. It didn't look very good and it didn't gain very much. They got two yards. Jason Crawford is the guy that made the catch. 
I congratulate uh, Chan Gailey for taking over Georgia Tech going into the ACC conference. Mm -hmm. He's still the offensive coordinator here with the Miami Dolphins and uh, will be going over. That's, um, I was mentioning earlier that the ACC has nine teams and five of the nine have uh, coaches that are uh, at their alma mater. Out their yeah. alma maters, yeah. yeah. And um, Ralph Friedgen is one of them. Boy, that conference has changed coaching wise over yeah, the last few ever. years. And what a job the ACC up until uh, really tonight did in their bowl game. Clemson won, uh, Florida State. There's the guys that are at their alma mater. Yep. Al Groh just came in this year. Chuck Amato, who had another nice season. Ralph, John Bunning did a great job with Carolina. They won the Peach Bowl. Carl Franks at Duke. If you're interested, if we look this up, our crack statisticians, our staff, there are 16. <laughs> 16 coaches uh, around the country coaching at their autumn alma maters in Division One, and I'm not going to name those. No, we I can't go there. No. Here's Hill. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Got rid of it. Murphy is tight end again, and he's out across the 45. Got about five. Under three minutes remaining in the 68th FedEx Orange Bowl, and the season for Florida will end up at 10 and two, and it will be the same record for Maryland. Likewise, at 10 and 2. All right, here you go. Who do you think is going to win tomorrow night? Give me a, you know, I think the two things, I think the key is one key for each team. Miami's got to be able to protect their quarterback. Right. I mean, if they can't protect him, I think that's, and Nebraska's got to be able to run the football. If Miami can stop Nebraska's running game, they'll have all kinds of problems. And if Miami can't protect their quarterback, if Nebraska can get pressure on him, They'll have all kinds of problems. Well, that offensive line of uh, Miami's has been my favorite group all year long, so I'm going to take them that they don't let Dorsey get too dirty. And I guess I'll take uh, the cane. And that's not to go against my friends down in Nebraska. Yeah. Well, we I had go. them this yeah. year, too, and we, they're a good team. Them. They are a very good team, but uh, I, think, I think it's Miami's year. Who's Swanee taking? Florida lines up now. Well, you know, I, I never pick because I'm too close to the boys on the sideline. That's right. <laughs> if I pick the wrong team, I'm liable to get run over by someone. That's very true. you got to go out there. You're you going out just there. Stay yeah. quiet. We're just fans. I think it's going to be a fine football game. I do, too. <laughs> and, Swanee, to you and Greece, uh, we finish up another year together. It's It's been quite a ride, fellas. Started off with uh, Swanee's induction in Canton. And that was a pretty good party. And we'll probably try to have another one here in about two minutes. So, uh, great being with you, partner. Thank you, partner. You too, Lynn. Brad, thank you very much. 155 and the clock running. And Florida with some of their reserve players in. And I don't know that they ever thought they'd get the opportunity or the luxury to uh, use three quarterbacks tonight. But they get to, and here comes Matt Sitter. And Matt, the fullback, takes it down. That's pretty close to a first down. I want to also thank all the gang that's been with us, our crew, sensational as always. As always, our director of productions, Bob Toms, assistant to the producer, Chris Damiani and Marvin Watson, our associate directors, Dick Ellis, Steve Fettig and Praven Martin, our associate producers, technical director, Reggie Wade, our games directed by Steve Byme and produced brilliantly by Kevin Smolin all year long. Our statistician, as always, PTR, Pat McGrath, and the best fighter in the business, Clint Deans. Our coordinating producer, college football's Bob Goodrich. And the executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz. That's our group. We're proud of them. And they did a heck of a job. Again, we have a good time. Nice going, fellas. So Steve Spurrier is going to win another Orange Bowl. One as a player, and now this will be the second time as coach of the Gators. And his 150th game coached for the Gators will be his 122nd win. That's something else. And Florida throwing here in the last 30 seconds. Calvin Kite makes a catch. You know, you know what it is. It's it's he's got a quarterback in there. He wants to let him throw the football. Yep, he's worked hard all he's year. He's worked too. hard. He practices. He goes all the meetings. He's finally got in the game. I think Steve's backing up from what uh, the, what just happened to Coach Hundley. He got a little bit drenched there. The buckets, and I think they're hunting down Steve right now. Here's Gillespie. 
And Gillespie's down, close to a first down, but the game is down to the end. I think Steve's looking for that. He's looking at it. Did they get him? They never got him. He was looking. He's still looking. Look at him. He's got his back toward the uh, back to the field. Look he doesn't miss much, does he? Well, he yeah. knows. Our congratulations to the 2002 and 68th edition of the FedEx Orange Bowl. The champions are the Florida Gators. 56 to 23 is the final, and uh, to Ralph Regan and his Terrapins, they certainly have nothing to hang their heads about. A remarkable story, one of the great feel-good Cinderella stories, if you will, in all of college football in a long, long time, and they had a remarkable year. But the final tonight, Rex Grossman comes in late, finishes up, and Florida wins it 56 to 23. We'll be back to Miami in a moment. Florida wins the FedEx Orange Bowl in fine style. 56 to 23 is the final. Let's go down to Lynn Swan. I've got the coach right here. He's excited. He's looking for players to talk to and congratulate. But congratulations to you, coach. Just describe this ball game and how it went for your team. Well, we had a pretty good uh, month of practice, and uh, we wanted to try to play a lot better than we did last time out. Uh, it really proud of the entire team. Defense, we got a little sloppy at the end, but overall had an excellent game. And our quarterback, Rex, was it's maybe the best he's played, and our receivers caught everything. So it was, uh, it was a pretty good performance. What, what was different about Rex tonight? Was he just just a little more in tune to this uh, game you know he picked out his underneath guys maybe as good as he's done all year and, and of course he, he always hit the long bone intermediate ball when it's there and the receivers were, were good tonight and uh, but Rex really picked his spots threw it where they could catch it had a, had one of his best maybe best games coach your, your your defense once again was superlative people talk about your offense all the time yeah. but your defense applied a lot of pressure yeah to the goal line team. stand was pretty big right there and we got it back right for half and made that touchdown it really helped but uh, our our guys were pretty efficient on offense right in that second third quarter I, I know one of the questions that was kind of hovering around this ball game you probably don't have an answer for but one of the questions was whether or not Brock Berlin would be coming back to your school after this game well again we don't have to worry about that tonight we're, we're going to be happy we beat Maryland we got us another Orange Bowl trophy and we're 10 and 2 and the Gators are the best fans in the world coach thank you very much Brett. <laughs> well Steve got their attention didn't he 56 to 23 the final and right now time to take a look at our built for tough play of the game my favorite kicker I like this guy right here Matt Petrovich had six tackles tonight after kicking off and that was a big one on Rich Parson that's our built for tough play of the game for tonight and the MVP of the night is with Lynn Swan you know I always love being with the MVP and Taylor <laughs> Jacobs wearing number six an outstanding ball game it's pretty tough sometimes but the talented wide receivers you have to get a pass in between those guys. Yeah, you're right, but you know, I mean, you just stick your head in there and try your best to go do what you can do out there. You know, you got two other great receivers in front of you, and uh, I just stick my head in there and try to do what I can do. People question whether or not this Florida football team would be motivated to play this game. Everybody's mindset was on Pasadena in the Rose Bowl. You come to the Orange Bowl, and you play a terrific ball game. What got you through this game? Well, you know, it's all started with my parents helping me to motivate me to come out here and, you know, stick my head in there, wherever I can do. Um, it was kind of tough to try to get up, but, you know, Coach Spurrier was trying to tell the boys, hey, we got to get in there. We got to get another win this season. I mean, we didn't make it where we wanted to go, but everything has a way of working itself out. Now, we know you're coming back to Florida, right? Oh, not a, without a doubt. Okay. Congratulations right, to you. Brad? Good job, fellas. There's your MVP. Don't forget, tomorrow night, it's the big one. ABC Sports at 8 o'clock Eastern Time will bring you the national championship. Undefeated Miami faces Heisman Trophy winner Eric Crouch and the Nebraska Cornhuskers in the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. Once again, our final score from Pro Players Stadium in Miami, Florida. The Gators, 56, the Terrapins of Maryland, 23. For Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew, I'm Brad Nessler saying so long from Miami.
Terrapins, the ACC champs, and now the 10 and 2 Florida Gators will finish in the top five. It was a good game. We thank you for being with us. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence. ABC Sports presents the most anticipated game in the Bowl Championship Series, the Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. Undefeated number one Miami aims for their fifth national title. They face number two Nebraska, led by Heisman Trophy winner Eric Crouch. Miami, Nebraska for the national championship tomorrow night at 8, 5 Pacific on ABC.